Hello and welcome to the very first episode of my new podcast, Keepers of Indigenous Voices. My name is Rani. Nina Nish Mantuak. I am Two Spirit. Um, and it's part of my uh, Indigenous heritage as well. I am Metis. Um, I have a Metis mother and an Irish Canadian father. And um, my Metis background uh, includes mostly French, but also Ojibwe, Cree, and uh, one Cheyenne ancestor. And um, well, I look very different than the rest of my family. Let's put it that way. Um, I basically took after the Irish side, but I've learned to embrace my Indigenous part. It fascinates me, um, and I love learning about the languages. Um, I've tried learning a few, but um, I seem to do the best in Ojibwe, which is where the majority of my ancestry comes from. And I just like learning about it. But I also get very, very angry with all the injustices that happen to Indigenous people. And the fact that Canada, the so-called politest country in the world, took part in cultural genocide, it just, it upsets me because I want to be proud to be Canadian, but I also want them to recognize what happened, you know? And I'm hoping to use this um, podcast series as a way to bring to light the various issues that have affected um, Indigenous people over the past several centuries um, and recently because not many people are aware of how recent this history is. Um, And like my family, I'd say we got off lucky in terms of being indigenous, but that just doesn't seem right. Um, I know growing up, the color of my skin and the color of my hair, it, they, everyone treated me differently than my mother who has dark hair and darker skin and my siblings as well and like one time I was I don't know making a scene at Walmart and for some stupid reason I I think I like wanted a poster board Uh, I didn't want them to put a sticker on it because I didn't want them to ruin it because you know I like drawing at the time and so they were like fine and then they like stopped us at the door because um we're stealing but not me because like i look white you know and instead they put the blame on my mother and it took a long time for us to get out of there without being banned from walmart for not doing what they said they like what we were doing and it was quite upsetting and that was one of my first interactions with how people were treated differently. And I just hated how my mother and my brother and my sister were treated differently just because of how they looked. And like growing up, like, you know, I'm pale, right? And two questions my mother was asked, is she adopted or do you dye her hair? Without the possibility that I could actually be my mother's child. No, I'm not adopted by the way. And I do not dye my hair. (laughs) And my mother never has. So. Um, but yeah, once I came to university, like, I didn't know a lot about Indigenous people growing up, even though I grew up in a town where there was once a residential school. Like, it just wasn't talked about, you know? And ours was one of the last ones to close, not the last, last one. That was in Saskatchewan. But here in Manitoba, they closed this one late. They also opened it only in the 50s or something. But it still had enough time to make its mark. And it was a good one. So I want to help educate people on what I wasn't able to be educated on. And hopefully bring to light some possible... new things to get, you know? Like, I wanna help, but I don't know how to help. I'm good at writing, and now I'm doing this podcast. And I just, I don't wanna be upset about it anymore, but at the same time, being upset is what's going to make a difference, I think. Because people, 
don't listen to the quiet ones. <laughs> and I'm a naturally quiet person. And I'm very, very passionate. Um, specifically, I love the languages. And I do not think they should go extinct just because they were never a written language. Although that's debatable at this point. So let's be frank. There was some form. But I want these languages to be maintained. Like they might not be a first language. But they should be an option for a second language or for parents to speak these languages to their children when they're growing up because it's their language. Like I grew up in a French Métis family, right? And we were allowed to speak French growing up. Not all of us were good at it. Um, I'm somewhere in the middle of being good and not good at it. And it was like my, it was how we conversed, you know, with a mixture of uh, different languages, mostly French and English. But everyone should have the right to speak their language and to embrace their culture. And it is not fair for the indigenous people or the African American people, or people from Africa rather, to be singled out because of their skin color and because they were seen as primitive. They were just living differently. Like, that's it. And so you can see I'm quite passionate about the subject. And I just want people to know. I learned about the residential school in my hometown when I was 20. I lived five blocks from it. And I didn't know about it. And like, oh, just, it's upsetting. Cause like, it's a dark history, yes. And it's a horrible history that Canada took part in. And North America, because they started it first. But people should know. It should not remain buried like those unmarked graves of children across Canada and the United States. People need to know. So I'm going to do this podcast. I'm going to bring on various guests who are um, of Indigenous descent, most likely, and are experts in their various areas. Um, people who know more about truth, truth and reconciliation, people who know about residential schools a lot more than I do, other than my anchor living near one, and people who want to bring Indigenous teachings, people who want to use Indigenous languages. And people who want to be seen as a nation living within these countries because they are their own nation. And yeah. So I'll see you guys for the next episode. I want to thank you guys for listening to my little rant. And I want to thank Planksit for helping me produce this. So, um, Thank you so much. And I am pl proud to say that I have a sponsor for this podcast called Be Fama Homes. And it is my hope and Be Fama's homes hopes that we can help the housing crises on reserves across Canada. So go check them out. The link will be in the description. And I will see you guys for the next episode. Thank you.